And let's head courtside now to our man down there, Patrick O'Neill. Patrick. All right, I spoke with Jan Michael Gamble earlier. He said after he disposed of Andy Roddick yesterday, he went home, he got some grub, and he watched Andre Agassi play his match. He said he didn't watch the match to scout it. He watched it because it's fun to watch Andre Agassi play tennis. So I said, so if you saw the match, you saw my interview with Patrick Stewart, a.k.a. Captain Picard, Star Trek fame, because Gamble himself, a self-proclaimed huge Trekkie. He said, yeah, I saw it. It was great. It was awesome. I'm getting him tickets today. Thanks a lot. So Gamble with a little bit of extra inspiration with Captain Picard in the house. Also spoke with Andre Agassi's new coach, Darren Cahill, himself a very good player in his day, a servant volleyer. I said, Darren, are you going to try to implement a little servant volley in his game? He said, yeah, it'd be good to see Andre get to the net and uh, end points a bit quicker. Should be a great match. Look forward to some hard hitting. Back to you. All right, Patrick. Stay with us down there. I know there'll be some glitteries around the grounds. We are ready to go. This is best of three for the championship. Jan Michael Gamble, first game, first set. Nice looking serve out wide. Jan Michael starting fast. Gamble, good tall player. He's got a great angle down in the court. Very powerful in his hands. Good athlete. Yes, out wide his first ace of the match. Well, I think you're right, Barry. He's got to serve a yep. good match. He's got to take care of his own serve. And again, a solid year, yet unspectacular. Still looking for the breakthrough that might happen today. <laughs> Jan Michael Gamble, four quick points, two aces. And he is off to a flying start, just where he left off yesterday. Yeah. And that's the kind of service game you want to have when you're playing someone like Agassi. I mean, this is a guy you want to establish that you are in the match. And so Gamble doing a good job of it there in the opening game. Andre Agassi. Andre Agassi, not quite six feet tall, in great shape at 170 pounds. One of the veterans on the tour now at age 32. Still calls Las Vegas home, although he does have a nice second home out in Tiburon, Marin County, not far from where I hang out. To see out wide, 15 left. Absolute perfect conditions for this match. Bright sun, very little wind. That's wide. As you notice, this is an all blue tennis court. A little bit unusual for tennis. Most people think of green, but they've really created a tradition here at UCLA with the blue court and the blue background. That's wide. Well, I think, you know, Billy Martin and Stella Sampras, I'm sure they look at these courts and say, well, these are UCLA courts. You know, <laughs> blue and gold colors of the Bruins. That's true. Very distinctive. That's wide. Andre ready to toss the ball and get ready for the third game, but this will be a second serve. And it's a double fault. And this stadium completed way back in 1984, built one of the reasons for the hosting of the tennis event of the Olympics, which was held in L.A. that year, and tennis was a demonstration sport. Stefan Edberg and Stephanie Groff won the men's and women's event. We'll think Stephanie Groff may be here today. The wife of Andre. That's long. And so Agassi holds, and yes, Stephanie is here today. A very economical motion. And again, he gets his body involved well. Good loading there. And again, up to the hit. Okay, that's one of the parts of his game that has grown. Yeah. It's no longer any sort of liability. I mean, he uses it well. He's smart about when to throw in the spinner. That's good. Very deep shot from Agassi, right in the corner. You know, Leaf, you're absolutely right. Agassi used to use the serve to get the ball in play. Now it's a weapon. I mean, you know, he's harder to break, yeah. and he's got the best return in the game, so that's why this guy is racking up the wins. Love 
15. It's wide. Set it up. Oh, that's where Agassi is going to try and develop the edge in the rally. Yeah, get Gamble really. off balance. And I'll tell you, throughout the week, Gamble really only off balance against Michael Chang. And I'll tell you, he served in volley to crucial moments to win that. So I like to see that in Jam Michael Gamble. Took out the German Kiefer. And of course, Roddick in the semi. So a good run for Gamble. Golfers use that term patience. And boy, Gamble had patience yesterday. Very upset, Roddick. Lost that match. That is just too good. Agassi using the entire court. Draws Gamble way wide. Watch the winner. Agassi's greatest backhand again. Watch how he extends the hands. That's when he hits the flat one. When his arms are bent, he's going to roll it. But when he extends them, he keeps that racket face nice and flat on the ball. Goes wide, and so Andre Agassi breaks at love in the third game. 2 1 Agassi, first set. 59 Wimbledon champion. A little known fact Alex, a SC player out of Peru. My Davis Cup teammate, boy, he was talented. No. Wimble missing from that forehand side. We've heard a little talk, Leaf, this week about maybe Gamble trying to use a one-handed forehand. We haven't seen it so far today. Uh, not yet, I know. Chuck Gamble, Jan Michael's father, said that you know the one-hander might be a consideration at times. He feels that he gets cramped. I guess he not cramped in his road to the final, except by Gustavo Kerton. Fabulous three-setter they had. It's Friday night. Oh. oh, man. That is spectacular tennis. Gamble can't hit the ball any better than that. All you can say there is too good. Well, champions know what they do well, and they're going to try and beat you with it. And they also know that if they continue to do it, they're going to prevail. And that's what Agassi oh. is establishing early here. This is his court. You're going to have to beat him. Finally over hits on that forehand. Boy, he's been accurate with that forehand so far. It's going to go long. The wide serve from Agassi. And he holds. One Agassi, first set with the break. I heard Jan Michael watched the television match between Max Mirny and Agassi last night. I wonder if he watched Mirny serve into Agassi's body because that was the only way Mirny won points last night. He might ought to try that a little bit right now. Yeah, that, that's a good serve. At least if it doesn't work, at least it keeps Agassi from going out wide as easily. You know, makes him think just a little bit. Just wide down the center. Well, I also know that Jan Michael Gamble, after that win over Roddick, he slipped out to Venice Beach for a little afternoon in the sun. And surf. Well, that's a very impressive hardcore so, yeah, record. That, that tells you just how tough this guy is. <laughs> Scottsdale, of course, his 50th career title. Oh! Only eight players ahead of him in tournament wins. He has 52 now after adding Rome. Agassi 
Agassi waits for Gamble to make his move, hits behind him. Rivera, I know this feeling when you play a player who does everything you do just a little bit better. And right now we're getting the sense that Agassi can play this game, but he's just a little quicker, just a little earlier on the ball. Look at where he's right on the baseline, dictating play. That's where he loves to be, on that baseline or maybe a foot or so inside. It's a lot of half volleys off that baseline. It's good. No. Finally, Jan Michael gets a favorable call on the sideline. Well, you, you can see what Gamble's having to do. I mean, he's having to hit the ball in the corner of the corner <laughs> just to get ahead on his serve. I mean, he's really having to play a very high standard just to stay in this. But, you know, he, he had that same situation against Roddick. I mean, Roddick was dominating him early. But one thing I think Gamble has shown this week is that, hey, I'm going to stay in there. I'm going to hang in here and compete. I think he's proving his mettle. He's certainly going to need it today. Just wide. Second serve. Game point for Gamble. Watch Andre now. He's on the baseline, but watch where he is when he returns the ball. A couple of feet inside. That's just great timing. Good. He's going to carry wide, and Jan Michael Gamble hangs in. Hold serve. Agassi up 3 2. First set. Center court, the Los Angeles Tennis Club at the top of your picture there. The wooden building. And there is my old friend Jack Kramer, one of the greatest players of all times both amateur and professional, and I think really the, the father of professional tennis. He's the guy that signed all the players up through the late 40s, early 50s, and Jack was the founder of the ATP years ago. Oh. And Gamble, a spectacular shot there, Leaf. He kind of snuck in and hit the volley. I don't think that's a bad play from Gamble. Anything to take Agassi out of his rhythm. Actually hit a little half volley. Almost makes that volley. Yeah, he had a chance there. He really did. Oh, a little low toss. His second double of the match. Oh, That's a let. Patrick McEnroe is watching this match with some interest. I'm sure he'd like to have Andre Agassi as part of the Davis Cup push against France in September. It's going to be a very tough Davis Cup match yeah. on the red courts of Roland Garros. Yeah, very tough encounter. I'm sure Roddick's already penciled in, but I think the fact that Gamble is again playing well, certainly he's got to be a regular consideration for Patrick McEnroe. Using that two-hander down the line. I guess he takes the ball so early and pressures his opponent. Darren Cahill has got to believe that I guess he can volley even a little more often, too. Not, not regularly, but certainly yeah. at the right times. Darren Cahill, one of the best volleyers a few years ago, semifinalist at the U.S. Open. Boy, could he play. Came in on a lot of short balls. Open court, Agassi again with that two-hander. So Agassi holds. And Agassi moving up the list. Pete Sampras at 63. He's been stuck on that number for a couple years now. Michael Chang with 34. A lot of those on hard courts. There's a couple of Andres right here. The champion's up on a big board. 
Judge going for number three. He loves to hit that short angle, doesn't he, Leap, when he gets the chance? Yeah, and that's a good play against Gamble. You know, you want to try and put your opponent into trouble. And Gamble, not as agile as Agassi, so it's tougher for him to get outside the doubles alley and come up with something good. Plus, he plays with two hands on both sides, so he's got to yep. make up a little more space, a little more ground. Oh, that ball looked like it might have gone wide. Gamble does not take a chance, hits it high. Bad error, and now he is in trouble. Down love 30 and down a break. It's too bad he missed that volley because tactically it was smart. You know, he got a high volley. I mean, that's what you want as a serving volleyer. Just made the error. The best two-hander off that forehand side that he's hit all day. And Michael really got into that ball. Again, when you can transfer your weight, I mean, he's stepping into that ball inside the base. I mean, that's going to add some MPH to the shot. I mean, that's, that's, that's just arm there. That's, you're leaning on that, that one. Leaf, you could see in that last shot the big grip change from Gamble on that two-hander on the right side. Yes. See, I think that's where Gamble is one of the best players in the world. Yeah. Being in a spot and hitting a ball to a location, you know, I think he's tremendous at that. Chuck Gamble, his father. I mean, he really can hit the ball brilliantly in a straight line. This is a younger brother, Tori, sitting next to Chuck. They were out working out on a backcourt yesterday afternoon. Jim Michael does not like the toss. From that far side, he is looking right up into the sun. Tough to serve from that side. Just long. And when you get that angle leap, there's the temptation to go for the winner because you're so far out of court, you don't have much choice. Yeah, and that point, you know, we heard from Andre Agassi in the open about, hey, I like a physical match. I mean, he's really making gamble work. Again, Agassi's going to start out back here, but watch. He's looking to get in here. I mean, that's kind of like Gretzky getting behind the, the goal in hockey or Shaq O'Neal establishing his position in the lane. When Agassi steps up on that baseline, look out. Break point. Right. Well, Barry, you're absolutely right. He's got to get in first serves. I mean, if he can get free ones like that, He's going to stay close. wide. I'll tell you, Jan Michael is using some legs at this moment. He's putting on the miles on that baseline back yeah. and forth. Well, he's hitting the ball a little bit short, so Agassi's able to step in and really dominate. And it's all about real estate with Agassi. I mean, he's on the baseline, gambles, you know, six, eight feet behind the baseline, working hard to stay in the point.
Now there's a serve that really worked. Agassi just got his racket on it. Gave Jan Michael plenty of time. Yeah, beautiful serve. Again, a good hammer down into the box. And see, he can operate from here too. It's just a matter of getting there. <laughs> you know, I guess he's not going to let you park in that side, that baseline. Look out. Talk about controlling the court. Well, when you're playing a superior player, you've got to find a way to hang tough. Mercedes Benz Cup championship match on the campus of UCLA. Jan Michael Gamble taking on Andre Agassi on Barry McKay along with Leif Shires. Agassi up 4 2. Patrick O'Neill joining us courtside today. We are back to Deuce. Agassi up 4 2 with a break in the first set. And Jan Michael not happy with the toss. He'll start again. Yeah, he's checking exactly where that sun is. isn't missing that two-hander. Well, this is his favorite backhand, and, and watch how he gets his arms extended through this hit. I mean, he's leaning on that, and that weight transfer also gives you more line. Watch his hands get right through the hit. So solid. I mean, I don't think there's ever been a player who hit the ball as cleanly as Agassiz. Will go wide, and Agassi has broken once again. He leads it 5 2 with two service breaks. When we return, Agassi serves for the first set on Fox Sports Net. I'll tell you what, we might have the best damn player in the world right here, <laughs> Andre Agassi. Finally, Jan Michael hits the deepest shot he's hit all day. You know, but I almost think it's worthwhile just to take some chances. You know, when he gets into that rally, Agassi has the advantage. Why not try to jump on something oh. else? Oh. Agassi so far spectacular on first serves. Nine out of ten. He's won 90 percent. Oh, man. No call right on the sideline. So when things are going right, things are going right. Again, in his office, inside the baseline, bread and butter forehand, and it landed right on the sideline. Nice. Barry, could you imagine a rule change where they play lets out? Depends on the net. Honestly, if that net is loose and the thing just dies, it's going to lose a lot of points. He just goes for it, hits the sideline. Well, I guess he's putting the ball right where he wants to, and he wants to put it on the line there, and he does it. His ninth winner of the set. Yeah, just to revisit that let, they do that in Division I college tennis. They also do it in World Team Tennis where they play out the lets. Billy Jean King loves it. Oh, yes. And Michael with a little time. This ball just stopped. Uh, I think with Agassi, you've got to win in different ways. You try and find some way to break up the rhythm. And this is a nice little drop shot. Little side spin on that. Look at it again. Opens it up. Little sand wedge. Yeah, that was great touch. No. 
Now, this is just such a tough proposition for Jan Michael Gamble today. Taking on Agassi when he's at his best. We are at set point. <laughs> And again, the open court. Spectacular play from Agassi. He takes the first set. Andre Agassi just taking the first set over Jan Michael Gamble, 6-2. I'm Patrick O'Neill, and I'm with the legendary Jack Kramer. It's a pleasure to sit next to you, a three-time champion of this very event. And, Jack, look what I have here, but a legendary Jack Kramer autograph. Anybody over 30 would have to remember this. I'm sure you have quite a few of these down in your basement. Not many, Lee, but uh, we sold about 12 million of them, so it, it made the Kramer family very happy and very wealthy, you might say. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, speaking of which, how many of these did you sell? I know it's not right to really ask about money, but it made you very rich, didn't it? Well, uh, I got 2.5%, and, and as I say, this racket sold 12 million, but there were 16 other models, and they sold about 30 extra million of those, so it all added up to a hell of a lot, I can tell you that. All right, you're buying after the match. Now, i got to ask you, um, back when you played, you know, in, in the 40s, you won this event, like I said, three times. Was the tour much different? Clearly it was. But what was it like back when you played? Well, the big difference, at least, was in, in my day, there might have been three or four players that might have had a good shot at winning a tournament like this. And nowadays, it seems to me that anybody that makes the top 16, they're terrific players. The, the depth is much harder, so when you win it, you've done a lot more than we ever did in our day. That's all there is to it. These guys, the depth is just fantastic. Guys you don't even know play super tennis now. All right, Jack, now what do you think of this match? What, is, uh, what does Jan Michael have to do to, to get back in and uh, even this match up with Andre Agassi? Well, he's got to figure out some way to serve like that, number one. And the only weakness Andre seems to have is if you can come in on a deep ball on his forehand, he might make a mistake. But if you get involved in his two-hander, he ends up jerking you around, and he never misses off it. He's about as good a ground stroke as the game's ever had. Budge, Tilden, Lindell, he's right up there with them. Well, Jack, now that you've had your, your hand on this great racket, I'm going to go out there and practice some serves. Maybe it's done me some good. All right, thanks a lot for your time. All right, Leaf, and say hello to the big bear for me. All right, Patrick O'Neill, back to Leaf and uh, Barry McKay. All right, Patrick. Jack Kramer, certainly a legend. Boy, I remember driving around the country as a junior Davis Cupper with Jack Kramer. He was our coach, and what a great coach he was. I'll tell you, Barry, I get around, you know. Yeah, you do. You're all over the <laughs> Got place. Got up the booth pretty quickly. 40-15. <laughs> oh! You know, Jack Kramer won three Grand Slam singles titles, one Wimbledon, two U.S. Open. But obviously he turned pro, right? So he exactly. didn't compete and was able to accumulate Grand Slam titles. Played very little at the French, if at all, at the French championships. But that was a guy, if you were playing slams, he could have racked up a few. Oh, yes, indeed. So Michael trying to hang in here and hold in the very first game. Big point here for Gamble. It'd be nice if he could establish himself in this second set. I feel comfortable about it. Try and take some momentum into the next game. Go! Just wide. Game point, Gamble. So Jan Michael Gamble holds in the very first game, a crucial game for Jan Michael to stay in this match. As we mentioned, this tournament has had some great champions, and there's a list of the guys that have won this thing three times, including the man in your picture, Jack Kramer. Frankie Parker won it four times out of Chicago. Roy Emerson, the great Australian. James Scott Connors. Good time winner here. And Andre trying to go for his third and join that illustrious group of players. So Agassi serves now second game, second set. Well, that's what I'm talking about. This guy's serve is so dangerous. 
I mean, he can hammer it, he can slice it. Dependable second serve, it's hard to attack. It's a lit. Miss hit. There's Gil Rays right there, the fitness coach for Andre Agassi. Is that Charlie Passarell? Sure looks like it, it is, is indeed, right behind Stephanie and Charlito, is Gil, who you call him. Yeah, Gil Reyes, there's Charlie Passarell, the great tournament director down in the desert. Yes. Yeah, well, you know, we talk about Agassi out on the tennis court, but I tell you, he puts a lot into what Gil Reyes has done for him. Yeah. You know, he says training at 32, it's not about training more, it's about training more smartly. And Gil Reyes has created an, an animal. He's quick around the court. He's powerful. Smart play from Agassi. Just takes that ball in the air. Now let's have a look now at our first set statistics. Now what can you say? It was all about Andre Agassi. And even though Gamble served well, Agassi broke him twice. So the answer lies in a balanced, certainly balanced attack from Gamble, perhaps, and the hope that Agassi will cool off. Third game, second set. Gamble still having trouble from that far side as he throws the ball up. It's really tough, Leaf. As you're serving, you throw the ball up. You see two elements. You see the sun right away, and then you try and find the ball out of that, which yeah. is not easy. And then also, once you hit the ball, you turn to follow your shot, and all of a sudden you've just got this big uh, black sun in your eye. And that's tough to see the ball. So it certainly takes away the idea of serving in volume because you have to allow your eyes to adjust. Open court. Yes. Well, that's where I think Gamble has grown as a player. You know, he's added that element of, you know, you know, recognizing the moment and then saying, go, get in. And that's a nice play against Agassi. Jeez, it's hard to get him off balance. Just wide. Okay, Leaf, if you were playing Agassi, which side would you attack? You know, I just would go body all the time, all the time. I mean, I just, you know, I, th I think Max Mirny showed that you could come into the body a bit, but I almost feel like you got to come into his forehand. At least he'll make some mistakes on that side. Go for it a you, little more. Yeah, yeah, I just think you come into the backhand, it's, you know, forget about it. He's not going to miss the two-hander. <laughs> and speaking of the two-hander, there it is. Well, as our great friend Eddie Dibbs would say, forget about it. <laughs> That's right. Forget about it. <laughs> Yeah, this is, I mean, this is just a machine. A ball striking machine, that two hitter. I can see now with 14 winners. He was behind Gamble in that first set, but boy, he's gone roaring past. from Gamble. Agassi with another chance here. Break point. No. Well, good decision there going into the forehand. You know, you get a couple free ones. It can breathe a little bit easier. Although playing against Andre, you feel like you're breathing through a straw. <laughs> you're doing most of the running. And Agassi loves the heat. He loves the battle in a hot environment. He 
loves to put his opponent through a couple hours of hell. May not take that long today. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's always a possibility when you're playing oh. the play. Agassi just drills this return. Watch where he ends up on this tremendous forehand return. I mean, he's well inside the baseline. And I tell you, when you're that inside the baseline, you can find a little more angle, too. Ooh, and a second serve opportunity now for Andre. No. Over hits it. Now this would be such a big win for Gamble if he can just hold on here. You know, hope that things will turn around a bit the longer he hangs in. I mean, if you're losing, the one thing you want to do is stay on the court as long as you can. You know? You can't win this in the locker room. This crowd definitely wants a little action from Jan Michael Gamble. They want to see a bit more tennis out here today. Hesitation gets Jan Michael in trouble here, right here. Yeah, I don't think he committed himself no. strongly enough to that approach. One more step and he makes the volley. And he catches the tape and Agassi has broken early in the second set. Agassi 2-1. Two games to one, Agassi leading now, second set with a break. Americans have really done well at this Mercedes-Benz Cup over the past four years. And they really have. Agassi, of course, winning the last couple. <laughs> on his way to winning the last two, I should say. Of course, Gamble played well here as well, so lost to Chang in the final. Of course, he had to retire from that match. Wow, it's one of the rare errors from Agassi today. A wide open court, and he overhits the ball. Oh, you can see Andre checking that sun. You know, Agassi, I think from that side, less bothered by the sun because his toss is a lot more flexible. He can move around on the baseline. grows and he knows he's running out of gas here that is amazing the old Beverly Baker flights an ambidextrous player in her day she would have loved that shot she did not have a backhand she had two great forehands great Southern California player Gamble is ambus sinister <laughs> two hands Big roar from this crowd. They're trying to get Jan Michael into the match. Now look at our Raymond Wild match time. Only 46 minutes into this match. Raymond Wild, the official timepiece of this event. Gamble now with 13 winners. Something we have not seen today. Oh, listen to this crowd. They would love to see him break here. Wow. Great game. 
get from Agassi. He looked like he was in trouble, Leaf. Oh, how good is he? <laughs> that is just spectacular play. Down a break point. Creates an ankle. Covers the line. Yeah, just a little wooden in his movement there. But we've seen two one-handed shots from Campbell in three points. Agassi with ace number two. No call on that sideline. Steve Ulrich is given the good sign. And so Agassi now up 3-1 in the second set. Well, let's take a look now at the Raymond James financial leaders on the ATP Tour. Uh, Hewitt, most of that coming from his slam wins. Of course, Costa, more than half of that coming from just winning the French Open. The one shot you don't see Agassi hit that much, and he certainly has a lot of opportunity, is the drop shot. He's got a great drop shot. Exactly. And, and it's because he does so much with the two-hander. He pushes you back, pushes you back, and then throws that little underspin. Yeah. I haven't seen it today. No, I was just thinking that on that last point. I, I think he plays it more on the clay mm -hmm. over in Europe than on the oh. hard court, but certainly it's a shot he could use. Or even grass. Yeah. Ace number six for Jan Michael. Well, you said he needed, what, 20 aces to stay close. So he needs a few more of those just to get back in it here. Absolutely. Perfect shot. Semi-final action, Mercedes-Benz Cup. I'm Barry McKay along with Lee Shiras and Patrick O'Neill bringing you the action from the Los Angeles Tennis Center where Andre Agassi has the first set, 6-2, leads 3-1 with a break in the second. A packed house, 7,298 in the stands today. Michael, game point. That will go long. And another roar goes up for Jan Michael Gamble. He stays with it. 3 2 Agassi, second set. An All American final championship match here today. Very appropriate hat at the Mercedes Benz Cup. Well, Jan Michael Gamble had some idols as he came into the game of tennis. When I grew up playing, it was it, I idolized Jimmy Connors and John McEnroe um, for many years, and uh, of course they were my dad's heroes, so they became mine. Uh, to this day, those are still the guys that influenced my game the most. Um, after that, it was it was Andre Agassi, Jim Courier, Pete Sampras, the guys I looked up to quite a bit. Um, you know, but then at the same time, I you know they're the guys I played against, which is which is pretty neat. Gamble trying a little drop volley there. Did not work. Well, Gamble turned pro in 1996. Agassi turned pro back in 86. And, of course, that was when Lendl was number one in the world. Wow. And by 88, Agassi had made it into the top three. I mean, so he climbed quickly in the rankings. But I tell you, it wasn't until 99 that Agassi finished at year-end number one, something that Sampras did for six consecutive years. Oh, great. Down the center with ace number three. Well, those were the years. Heck, you were even playing a few years before that against your friend John McEnroe. That was that match you almost <laughs> won at Queens. I won't bring it up again. That was an important word with my results. Almost. Legacy now very quickly to 40 love. Yeah, the thing about Agassi, too, is he tends to play fairly quickly. You know, when he builds an advantage yeah. on a serve, it's 15 love, 30 love, 40 love. That will go long, and so Andre Agassi up four games to two, second set. Well, Jan Michael now again serving into the sun. 
down two four and down a set. As a receiver, leap, you, you're getting ready to return. All of a sudden, the guy stops, doesn't serve. Does that bother you? Only if it happens, you know, frequently. Yeah. You know, I remember, I remember Carol Cuchera at the Open against Agassi. Remember, they got into it because Cuchera could not get his toss under control. That's right. Oh man, that is way good. Again, Agassi virtually half volleying that ball off the baseline. Yep. And he makes it look easy. His timing is so perfect. Puts the racket face right on the ball at the right time. I can see with his 18th winner there. Again, didn't like the toss. It's wide. It's good. Looking at the shot, looked like it was on the baseline. Steve Ulrich in the chair will not be overruling. Way too close. Yeah, I thought it was a tight call, but a good one. I mean, it looked good yeah. from here. Has hit all day long, just catches that sideline. as far as I can see on that point. Well, it's a tough situation for Gamble because when he's in trouble, he tends to hit the ball very flat and very hard. And that just allows Agassi to put him in further difficulties because you know, he just takes it early, uses that flat pace. I mean, maybe Gamble should try looping, you know, allowing himself some time to get back into the rally as long as it's deep. Gamble taking lots of extra time before this serve. Oh, Gam Gamble loses this game, you know. He can pack his bags. He's got to hold his serve here. Oh, it was for an approach shot. It looked like an approach. Came over the ball, and now Andre with another chance to break and go up 5-2. You know, and that looks like a simple error, but then you've got Agassi across the net. You get a little tense, you sure. try and do too much with it. You could use a first serve here. Take his time, find that toss. Get it into the body. Gamble with 22 unforced errors at this point.
legacy way off court. Goes for a big forehand win winner on the return. Now he's going to end up in the front row here. I'll tell you what, he's been practicing with his wife, Stephanie Groff, who used to hit that forehand from way off the court for winners all the time. Well, that's a good fight. He's put himself in a position to stay close here. Good game from Gamble. You can just hear him at home, Stephanie saying, Andre, Look, here's what you do on the forehand. You move around and hit the winner. You didn't watch me enough. That's good. Deep to that forehand side. Yeah, which of the 22 Grand Slam titles did you miss of mine? Exactly. <laughs> Stephanie Graf, she's got a few trophies. There she is. Great Stephanie Graf, what a fine player. Great athlete. Oh. No, it's wide, but Agassi keeping that ball low. Just took a little bit off that two-hander, kept it low. right into the sun. Gamble is really having to produce some very first-rate tennis just to get back to even. I mean, this is a good point he played here. Improvisation there by Agassi on that wobbly-looking one-hander, but he got it, got it back in play. I tell you, I like his fight. You know, he's yeah. hanging in here, and he's showing he's not giving up. mom Diane Gamble is somewhere on the grounds she's been hiding from our cameras and I'm sure she can appreciate that forehand I'm sure she'd like to see her son push this match further well, you're gonna hear a roar if Gamble wins this point and there it is and 7,000 people pulling for Gamble at this point to hang in stay with us Welcome back to center court, the Mercedes-Benz Cup semifinal action. I'm Barry McKay along with Leif Shires bringing you the action from the Los Angeles Tennis Center here in Westwood on the campus of UCLA. Those are the champagne seats, which Mike Davis, the great coordinator here, helps put, put in. And the winner along the top there, Bob Kramer, the tournament director, has done such a marvelous job succeeding his dad, Jack, to run this super event in Los Angeles along with a great staff. We've had a wonderful time, thanks to them. Jan Michael opens up, and this crowd really trying to get him into this set. Big follow through. That's where Agassi's been so tough today. When he gets down slightly, love 15, love 30 right back into the action. Uh, you have this moment where you're ahead and then actually just leapfrogs yeah. past you in the score. made a commitment to just going after that second serve. Can he get
get a look at another second serve here. A slight chance here for Gamble. Oh, that's long. And now a big opportunity, the biggest point of the match right here for Jan Michael Gamble. Chuck, his dad, with his fingers crossed, this is the moment. Andre Agassi up 4-3 second set. He has the first. It's Deuce, Jan Michael Gamble, trying to hang in here in this championship match. And a brilliant passing shot from Gamble. Good angle cross court. Well, Agassi has not given Gamble much target practice at the net. This time it's Gamble with a nice pass. a turning point. Oh. Gamble was able to hang in, and it gave him just enough confidence to deliver that winner. And he's got the break back to equalize in the second. So Jan Michael Gamble fights back. 4-2 down. And he's racking up some winners. Four games all. we got a match on our hands. Well, Gamble's fit. But Agassi has made him work hard to get to this point. Now, to me, this is a huge game if he can keep the momentum going. Gamble holds up new balls, changing it nine, seven and nine, I should say. That's why. Catches the tape. Darren Cahill, Agassiz's coach. Making he doesn't one. give much away. No, he does. <laughs> he looks pretty much the same throughout. I have a feeling inside he's thinking, hey, this has got a little tighter. Backhand down the line. Well, I, I think he knows, Barry, that perhaps that wasn't the right shot to hit. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of his Jaguars got loose. <laughs> 15 all. And he serves his first double of the match. Jan Michael Gamble is by nature a bit tense on the tennis court. I think we saw that in the last few moments. But I think that intensity perhaps brought on that double fault, just pressing a little too much. Second 
serve now. Big opportunity for Agassi to get right back at him. couple rallies. I tell you, Gamble's been doing a lot of running, and he looked a bit uncomfortable in this last run here. That ball had no spin on it whatsoever. It took a lot of pace off that shot. And now, double break point, Agassi. He breaks to go up 5-4. A brilliant game from the two-time champion. When we return, Andre Agassi serves for the title. A big hand for both players as they cross over now. Agassi to serve for the championship. Up a set, up a break, leading 5-4. That's an amazing sight as Agassi goes back to pick up tennis balls with his racket. Looked like a practice session out there. Agassi to serve now for the title. It's wide. 15 love. And this is when he starts moving quickly, I believe, in between points. Yeah, he's you know, close to the finish line. He's thinking, I'm going to break through the tape right here. And I think Gamble went through a lot the last couple of games. Physically, he could be tested. No, it's long. Just over the baseline. I think there, there is a tendency, though, when you're serving for a match this big, the title, to just rush slightly. You want it to be over. Yeah, particularly on the serve. You know, you want to maintain that nice flow, the nice rhythm, without pressing. Rushed it a little. And now Agassi two points away, 30-15. That will go long. And now Agassi serves for his third title. for the three-time champion as Stephanie looks on. A huge hand for Agassi here at UCLA. The traditional four-corner bow, and he's done it. Well, 53 career titles now, his third win here in L.A. I mean, every time he steps on the court, he seems to achieve new heights in the game. Certainly his place in the history of the game secure. A brilliant display from the three-time champion here. Agassi wins it in straight sets, 6-2 and 6-4. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Andre Agassi, the champion here at the Mercedes-Benz Cup. Let's go down to Patrick O'Neill, who is courtside. Jen Michael, first of all, congratulations on a, on a great week and making the final here in L.A. And I have to I have to think I know you wanted to fight and you never quit out there was it your serve that ultimately let you down today 
Well, actually, I just had trouble on this side over here. I serve pretty good on this side, um, for the most part. <laughs> um, That's true, you serve great. But no, the sun was definitely bothering you over there. That sun's been bothering me. I, I mean, I've had three matches, no excuses, though. I mean, I had three matches on that side. You know, I, Andre's just too tough. He didn't make any, any errors and, uh, you know, ran me from side to side to side to side to side to side. <laughs> <laughs> Decide. Felt like a rag doll out there, but uh, you know I'd like to thank everybody for coming out and cheering me on this week. It's thank you. Now, I know it's a discouraging loss. It's a tough loss. You wanted to win here second time, uh, reaching the final, but you got to take something positive from this first hardcore uh, tournament of the season. It could help you out the rest of the way. Well, absolutely. You know, first of all, there's very few places that I play actually that I feel more at home, and this is this is kind of you know Spokane doesn't have a tournament. <laughs> We don't have a big enough one over in Hawaii yet, so, but, um, you know, I feel like I played great this week. It's a good start for me in the hard court season. Uh, you know, it's, you know, although I feel home here, I think this guy, unfortunately, feels a little more home than me. <laughs> he actually did live here for a little while, so <laughs> it was just too good today. All right, man, great week. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next year. Thank you. All right, Barry, up to you. All right, Patrick. Well, a very well-spoken. Jan Michael Gamble, obviously disappointed, but... He was just outrun today. Agassi just kept firing away, and he said it best. Side to side to side. Back to you, Patrick. Well, here I am with uh, Andre Agassi defending your title. Man, just too tough today. Beautiful tennis. Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> now, you really wanted it. I mean, you were fired up when you, you know, match point, you won it, man. But what is it about L.A. when you come out here? You seem to you bring the, you know, the best tennis you got in you. Well, I mean, I think it's a lot of factors. First of all, this is a great surface for me. It's a high bouncing court. It allows me to really work a lot of spins, and then I can still step up and take it early. And plus, I love this arena. I mean, the crowd here is so, so, th there's so much enthusiasm. I mean. Does it remind you of uh, some place back east a little bit? I tell you what, it's a, it's a third size of the U.S. Open, and if you, if you tripled it, it would be every bit as intense out here because the, the, the support you give the players is just outstanding and it's a joy to be out here playing. Absolutely. Now, Jan Michael, he gave you a fight, right? He, he broke back in the second set and then, uh, you, you know, you broke right back is what happened. But uh, he made you work a little bit out there, which is probably helping your game, but you had a great week. But uh, what do you think about the play of Jan Michael today? Well, I mean, I think all around it was a pretty high standard match. Uh, sometimes a 6-2 set can be a heck of a lot closer than the score. And I went into the second knowing that this match can still turn into a, a pretty close dogfight. And sure enough, I was close to blowing it open to go 5-2. And... When he held there and he just picked up his game, next thing you know, it's four all. A lot, a lot can happen from that point. I felt good to play really well at the right time at the end of that match. Now, uh, this is a great win for you leading up to the U.S. Open. You probably got a few tournaments to hit. And uh, how do you feel heading up to the, uh, the big Grand Slam? Old. <laughs> what are you kidding me? Watching you out here, definitely not old. No, I feel real good. I tell you, it's been uh, it's been a couple months with not a lot of tennis for me, just a few matches, and uh, to come out here and to get uh, the, these quality of matches in, I got better with every match, and and just feel great about my game right now. I couldn't be happier with the way the summer started. So real quick, is your son Jaden Gill going to be helping you out, maybe giving you some tips down the road? <laughs> yeah, well, he can help me out if he just sleeps through the night. Let's start there. <laughs> <laughs> Andre, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Back to you, Barrett. All right. A very happy Andre Agassi. We'll put another year up there behind that 2001 as Stephanie looks on. A great day for Agassi. He played some brilliant tennis. Let's have a look at our final stats. We're into the numbers. It's telling you that Andre Agassi played a great match. Look at that. 20 winners, 16 on fours. Plenty of balance. Yeah, he's a tough guy to beat when he's playing well. He was there, unless you just absolutely serve him off the court, which very few people can do. He was tough, and so Agassi notches his third win here in Los Angeles. Stay with us. We'll be right back from UCLA.